Bird's Oma. She wakes early in the morning with a smile, and she holds my head up high. Don't you ever let anybody put you down, cause you are my little angel. Then she makes something warm for me to drink, cause it's cold out there, she thinks. Then she walks me to school, yes, I ain't no fool, I just think my mom is amazing. She makes me feel like I can do anything. And when she's with me, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. After school, she's waiting by the gate. I'm so happy that I just can't wait to get home to tell her how my day went. Eat the yummy food only my mom makes. Then I wind her up cause I don't want a bath And we run around the house with a laugh No matter what I say, she gets her way I think my mom is amazing Sing with me! She makes me feel Like I can do anything And when she's with me There's nowhere else I'd rather be in the evening, she tucks me into bed And I wrap my arms around her head Then she tells me a tale of a girl far away Who one day became a princess I'm so happy I don't want her to leave So she lies in bed with me As I close my eyes, how lucky am I To have a mom so amazing she makes me feel like I can do anything. And when she's with me, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. The solution for humanity. Who is going to take care of the wives? Why God created us? What this cosmic energy? The religion is the solution for the things happening all around the world. Jihad does not mean any war fought by any Muslim. Jihad basically means to strive to struggle. The Hindus and the Muslims will be united. He is not cosmic energy. He is more superior than that. Quran gives you the solution to the problems of humankind. Not that we shall despise each other. That according to Japan, India will be the superpower of the world. We will be a superpower. We will be far superior to the Americans. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahabi ajmain, amma abad, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim, udu ila sabri rabbika bil-hikmah, wal mu'azit al-hasna, wa jadul millati ahasan, rabbi shahli sadri, wa yisilli amri, wa halul ugdata min lisani yafqa wa kawli. I welcome all of you with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. You're most welcome to ask any questions on Islam and compiled religion or the propagation of Islam. So if there are any questions, you're most welcome, brothers and sisters. Yes, brother. Brother, can we practice Reiki in order to treat ourselves? Brother, that's a question that can we practice Reiki? It's a part of treatment belonging to different religion. Brother, as far as following any other religious treatment, whether any other religious science, it may be a science like Vedic maths. Maths? But Vedic maths is a different field. Or the Vastu in architecture. Anything in general. If that thing you are following is going against the Sharia, it is haram. If it goes against Allah and the Sul or Quran and Hadith, it is haram. If it is not going, it is allowed. 
So wearing any sign of a religion is haram because Hadith says that. It's haram. But following any other part of any other religion, which is not the symbol, but part of the religion, like in one religion, they eat potatoes. So can I eat potatoes? Yes, they are eating potatoes. You can eat potatoes because eating potatoes are haram in Islam. And in the eating potato becomes the sign that you become one particular type. In Jains, onion is haram. So why do you need onion? Is it allowed? Yes. It is most of if you don't need because, not because Jains say that, because the Prophet said, not haram. At least when you are going for Salah that time, avoid it. We are not doing it because Jain religion says that, because the Prophet said, while going for Salah because smell comes, that's the reason. Otherwise, onion you can have. So similarly, if any healing is there, which does not involve anything which goes against the Sharia, if they say, have alcohol, if it's not required, then it's haram. They say that in this medicine, you will have to bow down to an idol, it's haram. So any medicine, whether it belongs to any country, any religion, any region, if it's not going against Quran and Sunnah, you can adopt it. Same way following the dress code. It was a western dress code to wear a coat and tie, it's not against Quran and Sunnah. But wearing shorts for the gents also is haram. So any culture, any religion, etc., if it's a medicine belonging to a particular religion, or mathematics belong to a religion, if it's not against Allah and the soul, against the Quran and Sunnah, it's optional. Hope that's the question. Any other brothers? Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Brother, my friend asked me, will my prayer be valid if I carry notes in my pocket since it contains idols and photographs? Well, that was a question that most of the people, when they offer prayers, they have some money in the pocket. And almost all the money have got some picture, some photograph of some personality. And when he's offering me that money in his pocket or in the wallet and he offers salah, is it not shirk? So he's always thinking, isn't it haram to carry money and pray? See, bowing down to any idol is haram. If you keep that note in front of your head and then do sujood, it's haram. If you keep that note on your chest and then pray, it's haram. But if you keep it in your pocket, imagine the backside it is. No, normally the back there. No, intention only is not important. If your intent is I'll put it in the front of me and my intention is not to do worship, it's haram. You can't say my intention is not to bow down to the idol and I'm bowing down. That's also haram. Intention is there. Besides the intention, even the act is important. But if you're keeping the money in your wallet, and most of the wallets are behind. So who will worship behind? Right? Point number one, it is behind. Even if it's there close to your heart. The thing is, if it is not seen, no problem. It happens sometimes. Many people have a habit of keeping the money here. When they do sijda, in the sujood, the money falls. That time you should be careful. Take it out, keep it in the wallet, no problem. Not that you cannot shift, etc. If something is happening wrong, in front of you, you can even stop a person crossing you. Hadith says, stop him even you have to fight with him. Fine? So something like that happens. But it happens something you have in your pocket which falls down and it's a photograph. So keep it in a lower pocket so it doesn't fall down again. Don't keep it here again. Every sujood, you go up and down, up and down, up and down. So that precaution can be taken. But otherwise, generally, if it's there, it is not shirk at all. You can very well offer your salah. As long as it is not exposed, it's not in front of you, and it's not exposed. It's maybe hidden. Some no problem. Hope that's the question. Are there any questions on the sister's side? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi Brother, a sister wants to inquire while uh, constructing your or renovating your house, is it possible to use uh, Vastu Shastra? Because uh, in case we want to sell it in future, there are many people coming in and they check uh, things like that. They consider if it's constructed that way. So she wants to clarify. This has a question that can you use Vastu Shastra while constructing a house? Vastu Shastra, what little bit I know about it is the direction of the wind, like eastward, westward, where the wind comes, the circulation is good, it's no problem. It doesn't deal with any shirk. If you know of any Vastu Shastra, or if you go more into the details of it, if it involves any act which goes against Allah and Rasul, it is wrong. I don't know Vastu Shastra very well. I'm not an architect. I don't know very well. But if you find something in the Vastu Shastra, or AQ, anything, when you go into the study of it in detail, and find it going against any of the rules of the Sharia, this is a basic guideline. It's haram. If it doesn't go, and if it's giving you good ventilation and good circulation of the Alhamdulillah, no problem. But if you do that, I'll get a better price. But if it goes against Allah and Rasul, then forget the price. Allah and Rasul are more expensive. They are far more superior, more precious than your circulation and the price. Hope that answers the question, sister. Any other brothers? Fine. 
there was an article which came in Asian Age which says that Denmark should realize that we all are sailing in the same boat. It also says that the Muslims failed to convey the respected position of Prophet Sallallahu and because of this reason, this cartoon controversy took place. Could you please elaborate? The brother asked the question that uh, in Denmark it took place and the Muslims are 1.2 billion, it's a global village. Maybe the Muslims, they failed to convey the message that they're very sensitive to any caricature of the Prophet and selling the Prophet. I disagree with him. As a whole, I disagree with him. Muslims have been, mashallah, amongst all the human beings in the world, any community. You ask anyone, the people who say who are sensitive, not sensitive is the wrong word, in practicing the religion, I would say. Sensitive is not the right word. Muslims, alhamdulillah, the most practicing in the world. In quantity, the Christians are more than the Muslims. More than 2 billion in the world. We are about 1.3 billion, they are approximately 2 billion. Fine? But people practicing Christianity are a very small number compared to Muslims. Not that 100% Muslims follow. But in numbers, more Muslims follow Islam than Christians follow Christianity or any other religious group following the religion. That's the reason you find that if you compare about books written against various prophets, even against Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has written, against JSK, peace be upon him, but the maximum who and cry made objection is for the books written against Islam and the prophet. In today's world, in the past couple of decades, the objection maximum is raised is by the Muslim community, but it may take effect, may not take effect, depending upon how we take as a stance. What we can say that the Muslims should take a united stance rather than individual, that I And this time, as far as the cartoons of Denmark is concerned, Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah, the Muslims have taken the best stance, one of the best that I know of. They may have taken better other ways, whatever stances that I know. One of the best, if not the best. The way they went ahead, they have followed all the strategies. Sometimes they have gone overboard, which I disagree. They have done things which are against the Sharia also. But as a whole, otherwise, they have taken a very good stance, which I discussed in the last session and before that also. So I disagree with the person. But one thing is there, that people may think that Saudi may get a problem, or Denmark may problem, that they may think. They may think that if I do this act in Saudi Arabia or Kuwait, I'm in problem, but Denmark, So that they may think, which now they have realized, economic embargo, $1 billion every year loss, now they're apologizing, Prime Minister's apologizing, the paper's apologizing, all the freedom of speech has gone, now what happened? So now they've realized, so everyone tries to become a share in this area. So that's what they thought, but they realized that if you believe in freedom of speech, we have freedom of choosing any product we want to have. We will not have Danish products. Can they object? Not the objecting, oh, this is fanatism, what fanatism? Freedom of choice. Can they object? No. If you don't want to take oil, don't take. Who's forcing you? And they can never do that. Even with the haters, they'll have to buy. They cannot do without oil. Westerners cannot do. They cannot live. Therefore, King Faisal said, previously when they had an agreement before the Gulf countries came together, before the OPEC was formed, when they put pressure on King Faisal, he told to America, he had the meeting in the desert. We come from the desert, we can go back to the desert. What will happen if we stop giving you oil? And later on he was assassinated because of his tough stance. That's a different issue, all politics. But the guts are there. So can they do? If you want to boycott oil, boycott. Who's forcing you? They're not forcing you at all. So we have freedom of choice. So this stance that was taken regarding giving in the media, peaceful protests, legal action, political action, economic boycott was very well done. And now they've realized. So what happens is that if you're united, we'll be strong. So we Muslims should be united in our stance. And sometimes we should not go overboard. That is the time when the unity is not there. And that is the time people pick up on these issues and then the malign Islam, which even we are to blame for that. But as a whole, if we take a stance unitedly, and logic is stance, which even your enemy cannot object to, which I discussed last time. Hope that answers the question. Any other brothers have any questions? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam In the curriculum of hotel management, one of the portion is of wine. Can we teach or study as a curriculum? Brothers ask a question that hotel management, there is one portion that deals with wine. Can a person teach? Can a person practice? It depends what is teaching and practicing. In medical career also, one portion is alcohol. 
we teach and we practice also. What we teach, don't have alcohol. We teach, there are so many diseases, cirrhosis of liver and this and XYZ. So teaching and practicing, what are you practicing? I'm practicing, don't have alcohol. I'm also practicing, not have alcohol. But can we drink alcohol? Can we serve alcohol? That's the question. So in hotel management, if you have a portion dealing with alcohol, if you study about it, what are the good and the bad, what? no problem. But if they say that practically, you have to serve, that is haram. So you have to object saying, fine, I've studied. I've studied it, etc. I will not practice it. So surely you can put your foot down and say that I'm doing hotel management to work in a hotel which will not serve alcohol. Or work in a hotel which will not deal with alcohol. I will work in the hotel, but I will not be involved in the alcohol section. You can put your foot down. And why should the object, the person, so depending how you portray. So you can say, I have learned in medical, so and so. Give the full list, hundreds of diseases. I don't want to spread diseases. I have come here to serve food, not to serve diseases. So you say, hey, Hikma, go on the internet, more than 100 diseases you'll find. Cirrhosis of liver, cancer of esophagus, of the pancreas, of the stomach, of the head, of the neck, leukemia, you can keep on going, list the diseases. So, tell sir, you may want to spread disease, I don't want to spread. It is against humanity. It is against Islam, you may not like it if you are non-Muslim. No, no, hikma. But we are afraid. How can I open my mouth? How can I do this? How can I do that? Hikma. It's against, therefore I will not do. Tomorrow if you tell me to serve poison, will I serve poison? But how you say is important. There is nothing but so poisoning. Convey. But you want me to learn? I have learned. I have heard your lecture. The hearing is not wrong. Hearing the lecture, hear the lecture, I'll not practice it, I'll not solve it. Why? So you are my lecture now. Fine? So you should do the hikmah. And if it comes in the question paper, you can write in the question paper what is has taught you, but add another paragraph of the list of diseases. Like people ask me about Darwin's theory. I said, Darwin's theory, learn it. It comes in the paper, write everything what a teacher has taught in a textbook. But say latest research says X, Y, Z. So they should not think you don't know Darwin's theory. You can tell, oh, I've learned in the books of management that when you open the cock, you have to put in the angle because the fluorescent is there, the reference is there, you know, in an angle, put the glass and this way. All that you can repeat, but you can add them. I will not do this because of X, Y, Z, Z. So, if you're on the truth, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Isra, chapter 17, verse 31, وَقُلْ جَعَلْ حَقْوَ ذَاكِ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلِ كَانَ زَوْكَ When truth is heard again, falsehood, falsehood perishes, for falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. But, Allah also says in Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse 125, Invite all to the way of their Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best known Christians. If you talk with hikmah, they'll surely agree with you. Hope that's the question. Are there any sisters who have any questions? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am a homeopath and practicing homeopathy. But the homeopathic medicines contains alcohol and it is haram in Islam. So should I continue homeopathic practice or not? And uh, in India, we are not allowed allopathic medicine. Sister asked a question that she is a homeopathic doctor and she agrees that homeopathic medicine contains alcohol and Islam is haram, so should she continue? If you know that is not the only alternative, there are other alternatives, so you should stop it. If you know of one cure of a disease in homeopathy which no other medicine has, allopathy doesn't have, and magnetic therapy doesn't have, and unite doesn't have, and if alcohol is used as a last resort, then that part of homeopathy you can practice, point number one. Point number two, in India you cannot practice any other medicine if your homeopathy doctor is practical, it's not practical. I know many doctors who have passed Yunani and homeopathy, they're actually practicing allopathy. And most who I know who have passed Yunani, they're actually practicing allopathy. Those that have homeopathy, very few are practicing homeopathy. BHMS likha hua hai, BUMS likha hua hai, but actually they are practicing more of allopathy. Not that I am promoting allopathy, there are even many wrongs in allopathy also. So the thing is, sister, that as far as prescribing alcoholic drugs, you should stop. Even a Muslim doctor, he may be an allopathic doctor, if he prescribes drugs containing alcohol which has got better substitutes or equivalent substitutes, even that is haram. Is it clear? So I'm not only favoring and the allopathy doctors and allopathy doctors, so they should do their homework if they're Muslims. So you, sister, I feel if you want to practice medicine and yet go ahead, you can practice the other medicines. We don't contain alcohol. And surely once you get a registration from the government, as practically something is, theoretically something is. Hope that answers the question, sister. Yes, brother. 
السلام علیکم وعلیکم السلام جیزس سیڈ مائی فادر از گریٹر دین آئی اور مائی فادر از گریٹر دین آل ایزنٹ اٹ کانٹرڈکٹنگ کالنگ آل مائی ٹی گاڈ ایز فادر وی آس اے کوشچن دیٹ از کوڈ ون آف دا ورسز آف دا بائبل وی جیز کیس پی پی پر سیڈ دیٹ مائی فادر از گریٹر دین آئی مائی فادر از گریٹر دین آل سو ایزنٹ اٹ کانٹرڈکٹی آن دا فیس آف اٹ دا ویریس اٹریبیوٹس گیون ٹو آل مائی There are no less than 99 attributes given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, most merciful, most gracious, Al-Hakim, most wise. Regarding the attribute of father isn't contradictory. See, generally, if you ask me, on the face of it, it is good. It's a good, like, you know, one of the attributes calling. But people have mistaken that father as though Jesus Christ is the begotten son. So that the reason in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given any attribute as Ab. In Arabic, for father is Ab. A more difficult word, Rab has been given in the Quran. Rab is the sustainer, the cherisher. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his divine wisdom, that is the reason he has kept father out of the attributes. So if you ask me, yes, father is not the attribute. Allah in his divine wisdom, people will misunderstand. They will start calling their father as God. And there may be confusion. That's the reason I do agree that father is not the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at that time, what we have to realize that the present Bible is not the original Injil which was revealed to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. So many places in the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, calls Almighty God as father. That's one of his styles. So one of the attributes in the Bible for Almighty God is father, but not in the Quran. So today, as I told you in my earlier answer, that we have to follow the last and final revelation. All the revelation that came before were only meant for those people and for that time. Whether the Bible is right or wrong is secondary. But even if it was, it was meant for those people in that time. Today, we have to follow the last and final revelation that is the glorious Quran, irrespective of whether you're staying in India, in UK, in USA, and follow the guidance of the Quran and the last and final messenger. Hope that answers the question. Any sisters have any questions? Assalamu alaikum. Is bank card haram? If not, then the major uses of it is it haram? Sister has the question that is bank card allowed a haram? Permanent account number, why should it be haram? If you're using it for haram reason, it's haram. So having bank card per se, why it's haram? It's a permanent account number. As long as the account that you have, whatever you're dealing with it, bank card by the government, it becomes compulsory. So what's haram? Dealing with the income tax and everything. And as far as the account's opening in the bank, it should be current account. So why should it be haram? You can use many halal things for haram ways. Like you use a knife for robbing, that you should not do. So don't use a pan card for haram activities. Use it for halal activities. Hope that's the question. Any brother have any questions? Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. The Quran says that those who will enter paradise, they will stay there forever. So aren't we equating this sifat with the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's a good question brother asked. That when we say that when you go to Jannah, or the Quran says you will be in hellfire forever, you will be in Jannah forever. So doesn't it include with the eternal quality of Almighty God? That's a very good question. Therefore, the words used are different. When we say Almighty God is eternal, to use this attribute for human beings is haram. But in the Quran, for example, I say, forever you'll be poor. Forever? Taken for granted in this world. When I say forever, you'll be a poor person. It means forever means, not forever, forever till you live. Whether you live for 20 years or 30 years or 40 years. It's not for billions of years. So when I say any statement, that forever I live in India, I live in India till I'm in this world. So forever has a limitation. So eternal means, so therefore, the words are different. So when in context I say forever, means forever limited to this world. So when I say forever in the hereafter, again, that forever is still that time. It is not equating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has got no end. Now what is forever, how long, Allah alam. Now you'll ask me, brother Zakir, here at least we know in this world, you may live on average for 70 years, some people 50 years, some 20, some 100 years, fine? In year after Allah Wallam, how many years, billion, billion, but forever? Forever. How long will you come to know when you go in the year after? But that forever is not equivalent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has got no beginning, no end. There doesn't say no end. So no end is different than forever. Forever in context means forever limited to that context. Clear? And no end means? No end. So people many a time misunderstand 
But that for sure, if you compare the time span of this world and the hereafter, it is 0.00001% compared to hereafter. That will surely be billions and billions of times much more. How long? Forever. How long is forever? You come to know in Akhira, you can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. Fine? But we pray to Allah first, let us go in Jannah. Otherwise, if it's health, then you have a problem, and I'm in problem. So we pray to Allah, let us go to Jannah at least. And there, if you wish, that forever we long. Hope that's the question. Wa'akhir da'wan, alhamdulillah, bil alamin. Ya Rabbu, innaka anta salam. Minka salam, ilayka salam. Ya Rabbu, innaka anta salam. Minka salam. إليك السلام لأمرك يرجع أمر الأنام بين يديك قلوب الأنام لأمرك يرجع أمر الأنام بين يديك قلوب